Hello guys, Nato Ace here, and I too want to give my thoughts on the announcement from Yoshi Nori Ono of leaving Capcom. Yeah, so when I heard about this news, credit to Event Hub, that's where I got it. Yeah, I mean, Yoshi Nori Ono, the guy who basically revived the fighting game community, the fighting game entertainment. And if it wasn't for him, there wouldn't be a revival of what a fighting games are, or better yet, Street Fighter with Street Fighter 4. So of course, you already know who Yoshi Noriono. Yes, most people probably the general consumer know him as a guy associated with Street Fighter, but he is actually more than that. He's been working there almost 30 years, and just like what the other said, he's been a sound producer, producer. He actually involved with other games, but his notable resume is when he convinced Capcom to bring back Street Fighter with Street Fighter 4. I mean, heck, when I heard about Street Fighter 4 making a comeback, I'm like, oh my god, the return of a true Street Fighter. Because after a while, if you know the history of the fighting game, especially with Street Fighter the franchise after Street Fighter 3 because the game itself fun maybe not a lot of you know characters that people know from Street Fighter 2 so most people said eh, you know what this is what's happening with Capcom we tried it with Capcom vs SK that didn't really work of course their final game before the disappearance to some extent Capcom fighting All Star or Capcom fighting Jam in Japan that really didn't do good either, I mean, it is what it is, it's Yoshinori Ono is all about, so... And of course, on Twitter, Sunday morning in the West, he posts on Twitter that he is leaving the company this summer. So, is it expected? Was it a surprise? Uh, my thoughts about that one is, well, to some extent, believe it or not, I really didn't really was not surprised to some extent I mean uh, I had a feeling that sooner or later either something's gonna happen or you want to change career or whatever change endeavor to some extent but yeah because even so that again you know he's a guy who spearheaded what a fighting game is and like I said Street Fighter and he's actually lovable with the uh, FGC, believe it or not. I mean, yeah, he's a very nice guy. But uh, even so, when it comes to the business, yeah, there have been a lot of, uh, let's just say, a lot of obstacles. So, of course, if you've been following what happened with Capcom, the Street Fighter franchise, with fighting games in general, let's just say that Capcom got to greedy to a point that, wow, we screwed up. They thought they were invincible with Street Fighter 4, so they decided to make more fighting game to a point that it was oversaturated. Yeah, oversaturated. To a point that a lot of the consumer, including myself, also said, oh man, too many fighting games. You, know, you gotta tone it back. So, but that's a different story then. So, what really happened is that my theory of why Oh no, is departure. So first of all, you could probably say maybe because the company didn't want him there anymore and they're just trying to make him uh, miserable to some extent because he's been there for long and here's a little backstory and again, credit to Vesper Arcade and also I learned this from IG long time ago with Peter Schneider. When you've been in the company for so long that you're like a veteran or a legend, most upper management will not fire you at that point. So yeah, believe it or not. So if you've been there for long, and you're a legend, you actually contribute a lot, but because you did something really bad that can hurt the company, they don't really fire you, but they kind of give you what they call it, what Pierre Schneider calls it, a window seat, where you either get demoted or they'll just make you keep busy in the corner, you're not involved with any project or whatever, just keep yourself busy. Oh, you're still paid, you get paid, you know. <laughs> I mean, to some extent in America, hey, so you get paid to some extent, I mean, but well, that's a different story there. And yeah, because like I said, he did good with Street Fighter 4, but unfortunately, if you heard about Street Fighter Cross Tekken, Street Fighter 5, and then other fighting game, 
there have been a lot of controversy and a lot of sales just busting to Capcom's expectation. And I'm gonna put a link in the description box. Credit to Matt Muscle. I actually saw some of his video about some of the Capcom fighting games. Spot on. So if you want to know information of what happened for the game itself, yeah. So like I said, the theory that why he left it could be that because if you heard in 2018 he got demoted. Apparently he got demoted once again. So, of course, his role was from producer to executive producer, especially in the Street Fighter franchise there. And like I said, when it comes to Street Fighter 4, he actually did good. He actually did good. And of course, the story with Ultra, they just needed something, hey, you know, like, hey, you know, we have this asset for Street Fighter Cross Second, why not just use it for Street Fighter 4? There you go. I mean, just to give it a longevity. But yeah, from what I heard, and it kind of makes sense that. Ultra for Street Fighter 4 wasn't really planned, it was just something that. Of course, like I said, talking about Street Fighter Cross 2nd, in my personal opinion, as a casual gamer, the game is not that bad. The jam system could be confusing, but I can see from a casual perspective, kind of like gives you a fighting chance. I think that's what they were trying to aim, but again, there's just a lot of stigmata of skill base versus getting some sort of upper hand to be equal with competitors, but most people would say, even competitors said, just get good, there you go. Of course, he was also producing for Street Fighter Cross Tekken, he actually marketed like crazy. Of course, if you heard about the business side and the story about it, that game didn't do well. And of course, once again, he kind of probably pegged it on on it. And then when he came to Street Fighter V, again, there's a history about that. In the beginning, yes, like a lot of people said, including myself. Yes, when it first came out on February of 2016, the game was uber bare bone. However, and I kind of defend Ono for this one to some extent, but I'm not an apologist for Street Fighter V. But I'm going to also say, personal opinion, I love Street Fighter V as a casual gamer. It's fun. It's fun to play better than Street Fighter IV, but that's just my personal opinion. Competitive play, I care not. But with that said, yes. Like single player mode, the content was very, very bare bones. It was like not hardly any single player. And Ono did, and I said it before I said it again. Ono did warn people about it. Hey, look, when the game comes out, the game's gonna be bare bones. But then our plan is we're gonna add more stuff in the long run because we make it to Final Five as a service. Whether you like it or not, believe it or not, stick to those words. And yeah, it was a service, and then now in 2020, the game had better content and better price. I mean, you can buy, as of right now, I mean, it's on sale, but I think it's done by the time I put this up. I don't know. But the regular price for Street Fighter V Champion Edition is $30. The game in 2016 was $60. So you're kind of like fighting for either time versus money. So if you waited for this long, you never played Street Fighter V, this is your first time playing it. At least you save like thirty dollars. There you go. Or if you want to play it as soon as possible because you're a hardcore Street Fighter fan, you're willing to pay sixty dollars because knowing that they're gonna add more free content and because it's all to pay content for characters. Again, you know, it's, like, it's time versus money there. But yes, and again, unfortunately, the initial sale for Street Fighter Five, the vanilla version, wasn't good, and then a lot of people again kind of beg to. <laughs> Oh no, unfortunately, to a point that, yes, he got demoted, and the guy who's in charge of Monster Hunter World, which is, the, from what I heard, the fun game, was promoted, and now he's in charge of developing the game. So, of course, on my other video, my thoughts on the fighting announcement, including the Street Fighter V Summer Update, I kind of said, I never heard of these two people, because, again, Oh no was at the forefront of when it comes to Street Fighter. Like he's the guy that tells you what it is, like what the characters are. It's always the guy, because, you know, he's a very social, friendly guy. And the other two's like, I never heard of these people. But again, they work with Ono, or in his division. Again, <laughs> there. So, yeah, if you see a lot of those factors push to shove, and of course him getting demoted apparently twice, I can see probably why he probably just want to leave there. I think either one, he has nothing else to offer there. I mean,. Tried everything he could do, it just it never worked. He got demoted. People blaming because I'm surprised a lot of people said 
Oh, oh no, Ruin Street Fighter 5. Maybe. But you gotta also keep in mind that it's also the business side. Remember, Capcom is a company. It's a business. They're not there to please people to some extent. Yes, please people, they give you more money. But a lot of these Japanese companies, sometimes they don't understand that. They make some stupid decision, like the gems for Street Fighter Cross Tekken because for the casual, dumbing down Street Fighter Fight to some extent, so the casual can get it. Because believe it or not, that's been one of the biggest problems with the Street Fighter game, even with Street Fighter 2. Uh, I saw this at Icon, an old story basically said a lot of businessmen in Japan were noticing that when Street Fighter 2, the arcade version, they're not seeing a lot of people playing it, and when someone said, how come we're not playing this game? Why don't you play that other person? And this guy said, well, he's just going to beat me and waste my $100, $200 yen, or a quarter, 50 cents, you, you get the idea. So they noticed, like, wow, so Street Fighter 2 is meant for the hardcore. Well, yes and no, just you got to get good. I know nobody likes to hear that, but it is what it is. They're yeah, always trying to find that point to for the casual, and... Always doesn't work. The jams didn't work. In Street Fighter V, the mechanics sort of didn't work. Again, it's a uh, potato potato situation there. And of course, like I said, when it comes to when after Street Fighter 4, Capcom thought they had a gold mine and they got crazy with fighting game with Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Then <laughs> a couple of months later, Ultimate version, not even a DLC expansion because they didn't know how. They said, well, this is how we've been doing in the past, which you shouldn't. And there are a lot of HD remastered games, but they were expensive because according to them, that's how they get money back or get even. Yeah, that didn't really work either. I mean, a lot of poor decision, a lot of fighting game too much that people said, you know what, I'm not gonna buy a lot of theirs, it's just too expensive. But again, like I said, the biggest game, Street Fighter, Fight, Cross Tekken. Yeah, they kinda peg Ono, and like some people said, Ono oh rules Street Fighter Fight. I mean Yes and no. He's just trying to please his bosses for the business side. They're trying to, again, the game. They want to release it before Capcom Cup, which everybody knew that. And again, uh, it is what it is. So the question now is my thoughts. What do I think about Ono leaving? All I can say is, uh, like I said, I'm not FGC, so it doesn't really affect me that much. But in the perspective or a casual person, I would say, Ono just gotta do what he gotta do. I mean, if he's not happy there anymore because he really can't offer anything anymore because, you know, he's voted, people are like blaming to him that he's not doing good and that the new people are doing better because, of course, if you saw the summer update, better update. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe it's time for him to pass on the mantle. Maybe he'll go somewhere else. Maybe he'll work with them companion with Rada, his best friend. Maybe he'll be an SNK. Maybe something. Who knows? I mean, it's just a common thing in business that sooner or later, you're, the old guard's gonna just say, hey, you know, I've done what I've done. It's time for me to move on. And it's time for change. I mean, yeah, he's a face. He's an important person in the FGC. That's why a lot of people were shocked. But Again, it is what it is. Reggie leaving Nintendo. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people did not like it because of what happened to Nintendo as of right now. But things have to change. You know, change are good. Not always for the better, but change are good. So if, say, I'm just going to put it up because of Cross Tech and Harada decided to step down to do something different, hey, again, it is what it is. You got other people. Remember, believe it or not, like each of this executive producer, they got their own team. And a lot of time, believe it or not, they're probably training them to be the next executive producer, the next director, whatever. So, I mean, look at Okubo. He was part of Harada's team, and now he's a producer for Soul Calibur 6. Again, he's doing a good job. So far, the game is good. Should I buy the DLC? Well, I got too many fighting games. I gotta finish Judgment also. I'll be playing that right now. I like it, English dub, different story there. But yeah, the bottom line is, for me, yeah, he gotta do what he gotta do, not really too sad about it. I mean, change are good, I'm just gonna say that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for people hating him, all I can say is, again, just keep in mind that if it wasn't for Rono, there wouldn't be Street Fighter 4, there wouldn't be the return of fighting games, 
and uh, people just gonna be sad because for a while they were sad. I mean, uh, uh, 3D games, not a lot of people like it. SNK games, a lot of people didn't like that. They weren't a fan of it. So, but again, Ono brought back what a fighting game is all about, and to a point that Ed Boon made like a better Mortal Kombat with Mortal Kombat 9. Uh, what else I can think of? Other company doing their own indie fighting game, Skullgirl. My Little Pony, aka um, Damn Fighting Hurts. I don't know why I said Little Pony. Excuse me. So, you got what I'm trying to say here. So, again, whether you like him or not, he is a big important person for fighting. So, yeah, those are my thoughts. And for Yoshinori Ono, just want to say thank you. It was it for you bringing back the fighting game, especially for the casual who you know what Street Fighter is? That's like it synonymous franchise like Super Mario Brothers people will probably forget what a fighting game genre is all about so thank you for that I know you worked so hard to convince Capcom I know it was always hard because of the business side but you did what you did you had a legacy and yeah hopefully for the best whatever your future is what your next endeavor you know I can't wait to see so with that I'll see you guys later